computer operator before this all my life and and then uh, the company went to a new system so they eliminated that position and so I'm faced at 61 looking for a job start your own job so we did that and we always liked kettle corn so there was a fair in front of our place where we lived in Wind Lake and it was for sale and we didn't end up buying that one but we ended up searching all over for the best unit and I felt and so we got that unit and we started kettle corn that year 2009 and then we we tweaked it and did different things and Terry my wife well he can't cook he makes hot dogs frozen pizza boiled dinner or eggs pops my mother alludes to it pops to nobody's disservice he's not a very good chef so in, when I was in Norway and I heard that he was gonna be doing kettle corn not gonna lie we kind of got a little worried with that whole spot so um, but I didn't really know what he had though until I finally came back I always loved kettle corn I would always look for it any fair and we finally got to a point that we agreed on one one and I said now the trick is to be consistent. Forever and ever you have to make it the same. And I got together and we came up with what we consider the best corn and part of it the best product. And we put that together and it really received real well. And so we set up a different area. My first one was at St. Martin. And then we uh, just went to different farmers markets and stuff like that. And and uh, it went over real well. Any place we could set it up, we did. And uh, Taylor and Terry were there the first day that we did that. And so mm -hmm. Taylor, my granddaughter, has been with us for like 10 years. So she started when she was 10 years old. A little, little, little person. I am Taylor Knudsen. Um, Pops is my grandpa. And I started here when I was, I think I was like nine or 10 started working for him when they started. It, it's unbelievable. I've loved working with Taylor, our granddaughter, since she was 10 years old. And to this day, I just can't tell you how much I love being with her and being with Mark. And our team is, a, we've got a great team. Then we started to add all the different flavors. Terry came up with different recipes for different flavors. Cheese, white cheddar, caramel corn. That she started right from scratch. And that's how she makes it today in the copper kettle. Then we had uh, one guy come uh, and ask us about making, well, somebody said brandy old fashioned, which I didn't know how to make brandy old fashioned caramel. I couldn't quite get how to get all this into it. So uh, one, one company came to us, Soul Boxer, came to us and said, could you use ours, which is a pre mixed brandy old fashioned? So I did, and it turned out phenomenal. From there, we've done bourbon. We use bourbon bullet. Probably Mark, I think he's like just the most creative. Like he comes up with some really crazy like things. And even like the customers will bring up like different flavors to do. I remember like this one girl really wanted us to do Mountain Dew flavored popcorn. And I was just like, uh -huh. like I don't even know how we would do that. We, we haven't done that. I don't think we can, but I just, when mom says that she may or may not have a lot to do with the flavors, she has a ton to do with it. And we call her the mad scientist, mostly because if mom likes it, the rest of the world will like it. Or at least like 85%, maybe 95, I don't know. It's all about experimentation. The nice part about ours is the reason why we have this shop. If you ever come into the Muskego shop and um, however long we're here, it's a very different kind of atmosphere because we run this a lot like a brewery. I enjoy beer. We'll just be frank and outright there. But when it comes down to how we actually make and produce this stuff is you're walking into a popcorn store that's kind of like a brewery because you are literally seeing everything getting done. We just have so many different steps that we can do. That and we have so many different flavors that you can do it with. The nice part is when we do experiment on flavors, that's our R&D style of allowing all of our customers to kind of give us their sense of it. Because we do have flavors, we do have flavors that we'll never do again. And there's one flavor that I absolutely hate, and it's the red hot cinnamon. I can't get it, I don't know why. There's everything that we did, 
it just cannot do it. That and lemon. Now we've got at least 30 or 40 kettle flavors that we can do plus, and then now we've got how many different cheeses and so on. So it's, it's pretty awesome to kind of see the growth from that 2016 onwards all the way to now. What I want, what I want to do is just make kettle corn, but Mark decided to do more than kettle corn. Uh, he decided uh, to come up with a combination of kettle corn. We just, we just, Terry and I just made kettle corn the way, and she came up with caramel and cheese and stuff like that. And so, uh, Mark, I think maybe, uh, I'm sure his mom had something to do with it too. They put it together and came up with Mexico mix, which is a real good, everybody really likes it. You know, it's, it's his own original deal. Flavors are interesting. They come along, some of them are mistakes, and they turn out so well that we keep them going. We do popcorn differently. We just have fun with it, but also we put a lot of quality and a lot of quality, a lot of time, a lot of effort into making sure it's packaged the way it's packaged, it tastes the way it tastes, and you're gonna enjoy it. If, if it says it tastes like taco, it absolutely tastes like taco. It's rewarding. What I, what I have a hard time is when the little kids come up with their money and they push it over the counter, and I have a hard time taking it. <laughs> I have to say, I, I, it was really hard also when little kids would come and get a sample and they loved it and maybe their parents were in a different part and, or something, so many times I would give them free popcorn. And then Richard finally said, Pop said to me, you can only give away one bag each event, that's it. So I have to be real careful. Mark doesn't know that. Sometimes I give one away. Well, I think my picture should be on every bag. And, uh, and he, he's done it somewhat, but he has his own brand too. Right. And, I, and that's the only thing. What, you don't like that? No. Where's, where's my picture on here? That one doesn't have a picture on it. Yeah, that one doesn't. Um, I was a teacher beforehand for nine years. Uh, I love doing all the branding, marketing, all those kind of things, I will allude, like most of that is actually, as an athletic director, that's what my job kind of was. When I'd go to um, the first school that I was at was rebranding that athletic kind of experience for the kids and stuff, and that's where I kind of started to find my passion, how fun it is to build a brand. Our product should stand, uh, you know, kind of apart from that, so we decided to, we, me and the mouse in my pocket, decided to uh, brand this entire spot and not take dad's face off the bag because it's still on the bag. It's still on the black bag. They'll always have his face on there. He is the Colonel Sanders of popcorn. Colonel, Colonel Pops could easily be, instead of Colonel Sanders, that's funny. You could definitely spell it differently. I never even thought about that until right now. That'd be fun. So he's, he's Colonel Knutson with the K. Colonel, nice. Face will always be on there, but we had to start going towards the route of the three kernels and really branding it as a whole. And that's what's kind of made us grow into the space where we're at. It was first St. Martin's, so it's like September 1st, St. Martin's. And there was a guy who came up and uh, he basically offered me the opportunity to get a blank check and write and then start a store. And, um, you know, this is a family business and, and these guys have already put six years of their time into it, already building it. So although that's a very like awesome offer and stuff like that, I decided to kind of go over and beyond and I was just going to do it myself. We'll see what happens and go off of that. So in September, right after that one, I figure if some guy is willing to invest hundreds of thousands of dollars potentially into a business like this, why not just do it yourself and keep it all um, within the family? And that's uh, what I decided to do, so. Being with the brewers, I know there was like a lot of talk about trying to like get into certain like sports complexes for us, but I think having like being at the brewer stadium is like a really big one for us. There's a lot of good memories. We do a lot of cool stuff, but honestly, I think the trifecta of we're in with Miller Park and I think that there's a great reaction there. I actually was just at a ball game the other day 
and it's really awesome to walk by and you see your product getting picked up by people that you have no idea who they are, but they just want some good kettle corn and like, that's awesome to me. Um, I, I would love to be able to experience that at, at the Pfizer Forum. I would love to experience that at Lambo. And you know, it's one of those spots of, it would be amazing to be able to have our popcorn with uh, ingrained kind of in the sport culture because we love that. We love being around sports. I'm a PE health teacher. So in that same sense, it's like, that's fun for me. And it kind of keeps me around sports. Yeah, we're doing something a little different, but um, that's kind of the whole spot. And then <laughs> we're gonna set a world record. We're gonna set a world record for the most popcorn cooked, the most kettle corn cooked by weight in a 24 hour period on one kettle. This store was interesting, to, huh? Fire. Oh, my fires. Sometimes I start a fire. Ah. I don't mean to. I think Graham started probably about 10 fires. Um. Favorite memory of a fire? I will never forget this fire because nobody else saw it. It was really bad. I think that we were helping, we, we work with the Vocational Warriors. The Vocational Warriors is a high school uh, between like 18 and 21 and they come in and they work with us and uh, basically get some really great on the job training. And <laughs> we were working with them, teaching them how to do coconut oil and sea salt. And uh, I think, I actually think Taylor was in here too, learning how to do the cheddars. Both of their backs were to the machine that always catches fire. It doesn't really catch fire, it just starts fires. And the fires were good. Anyway, all I do is remember working with these kids, looking over and just seeing straight flickering orange and just wondering what was going on. That was the largest fire that we had. I, I think we used an extinguisher. Either that or we pop the door and throw it outside. I don't know if that's really health code or whatnot, but did we use the extinguisher for that one? Nobody knew how to use a fire extinguisher. And that was like one of those spots of, how do you not know how to use a fire extinguisher? We cause a lot of fires. But the flame was, no joke, at least probably, I don't know, two feet from the ceiling. Like this thing, this thing was rip roaring. And all I could do is like walk over, try to do it as calm as possible because we have like a bunch of other kids in here and stuff doing it. But that was probably the best fire and the little girl come up to me one time and she says, no, this is the best kettle corn in Wisconsin. Oh, it's fun bringing the family in. Really, it's, it's really a lot, uh, I just, it's really something to have Mark continue this, okay? Because, uh, because of a health problem I ran into, it would have been done. There would have been no more cut, pop kettle corn, but he, he's, uh, he took it on and he's running it, so, and that, that's pretty gratifying. I'm proud of him. You know, he's done a good job. And I gotta say, being a kettle corn lover, I have never tasted a better kettle corn than ours. And that's what we're about. We're about family and trying to keep everything going. And I too, I'm so proud of Mark and for what everything that he's done. And I have three little sisters and they're like six, four and three. I hope to see them like, work here someday like I hope Pops is still around like the store and everything I like would love to see them able to have like a first job here or something. Could you imagine this guy doing what he did? Ten years ago you randomly do this and now we're sitting here and we're able to say that we're at the Brewers. We're talking with some phenomenal companies to be able to do it but we've grown exponentially over the past 10 years to get to like where we're currently at and it's kind of crazy. I don't know, that's crazy. 10 years later, what's gonna happen in 10 years? I have no idea. That's the crazy question. Mm -hmm.